Welcome back to GDT Tech Reviews. In this video we are going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best tablet, 2022. So let us get started and the review based on our studies and small research. If you have any personal suggestion do let us know in the comment section. If you are for the first time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon for more videos. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. So let's get started. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is the biggest tablet I have ever used. It has a massive 14.6 inch display with a small notch on the top, when held in landscape orientation. The notch houses a dual camera setup and is barely even visible when using the tablet in landscape mode. However, you will notice it while holding the tablet in portrait orientation. Samsung has kept the bezels thin, which looks good, but this does make it tough to hold the tablet without touching the screen. The 726 grams weight is noticeable, and I often found myself resting the tablet on a table or on my lap when using it. Samsung has managed to keep the tablet surprisingly thin at just 5.5 mm. In landscape orientation you'll find the power and volume buttons in the top left corner and the SIM tray on the top right. You get four speakers on the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra with two on either side. In addition to this, the left side has a microphone while the right has a USB Type-C port. There's an in-display fingerprint scanner that's easy to reach with your right thumb when holding the tablet. The bottom has a proprietary 3-pin connector with notches on either side to latch onto compatible accessories such as the book cover keyboard that Samsung also sent for this review. The back panel is made of metal which gives this tablet a premium look and feel. There's a camera module at the top with two camera sensors, and a glossy black strip extends below it. This is the wireless charging mechanism for the S Pen, which can be latched on here magnetically. The Lenovo Tab P11 Plus has an 11-inch and 2K screen display. The Tab also has immersive sound with quality Dolby Atmos quad speakers. Lenovo has also installed Google Kids Space for Kids Entertainment wherein people can download thousands and millions of kids apps that are verified by Google for their kids. The YouTube Kids app is also a boon when it comes to diverting toddlers' attention. It is also a great device for people with creative minds. The tablets you paint, draw, sketch and take notes with quality results. The Lenovo Tab P11 Plus is a stylus-friendly tablet, but the stylus needs to be purchased individually. The Lenovo Tab P11 Plus offers three storage options 64GB 4GB RAM, 128GB 4GB RAM, and 128GB 6GB RAM. The Lenovo Tab P11 Plus has an 11 inches display with an 81.8% screen to body ratio and 1200 by 2000 pixels resolution. The Tab S has a 2K display which is an upgrade and one which you notice while using it. Add to that the Dolby Atmos quad speakers with the display and it gives an immersive multimedia experience overall. Lenovo Tab P11 Plus runs on Android 11. It has a MediaTek MT6785 LEO G90T chipset, octa-core, the Lenovo Tab P11 Plus has an aluminum alloy design with a dual-tone finish. The Tab comes in three colors, slate gray, platinum gray, and modernist teal. There is also an optional keyboard available with the device and it also is a stylus-supported tablet. Lenovo Tab P11 Plus features a 13MP main camera with autofocus and a wide lens, it also has a LED flash feature in the main camera and video recording at 1080 at 30 fps. The selfie camera has an 8MP camera with fixed focus and video recording at 1080 at 30 fps. The camera is one of the strongest suits of the P11 Plus. The size and weight are both comfortable for tablet tasks, including sitting on the couch and reading articles or books or taking notes with the Apple Pencil as I like to do. It's not quite as easy to one hand as the 8.3 inch iPad mini, but the trade-off is you get considerably more screen real estate. The Air's 10.9 inch screen is imperceptibly smaller than the 11 inch Pro's display, but it's still large enough for a great movie watching experience. It does start to feel cramped when you're using it for laptop like work, with split screen and multitasking modes. If you're considering trading in your 13 inch laptop for an iPad, I'd strongly recommend going with the 12.9-inch Pro model. 
What you don't get on the Air is the Pro's Pro Motion Variable Refresh Rate Display, nor do you get the 12.9-inch model's brighter mini-LED screen. Most people won't miss Pro Motion, it can make scrolling animation smoother. But if you're reading static text or watching video, it won't make a difference, and it's not worth the $200 cost to upgrade to an iPad Pro for it alone. Similarly, while it would have been great to have the mini LED display here, the current 500 nit screen is still plenty bright enough to use the iPad Air in bright rooms or even outdoors, although if you watch a lot of movies you might miss the inky blacks offered on the larger Pro. The Galaxy Tab A7 has a metal chassis with all the trimmings. In addition to the roomy display, you've got four speakers, USB-C for charging, a headphone jack, and a micro SD slot that accommodates memory cards up to 1TB. It's nice that it comes in three colors, which is more than most tablets in this class. Further, Samsung has some first-party accessories for it, such as a folio case, that complete the experience. Processing speeds are above average for this class. The tablet includes a Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 processor with 3GB of RAM. This combination was hardy enough to power the tablet through most tasks with ease. Everyday activities such as email, browsing, YouTube, and social networking didn't tax the tablet at all. When I tested the popular racing game Asphalt 9, I saw dramatically better performance than I did on the MediaTek-powered Lenovo Smart Tab M10 HD. Battery life is fantastic. With a 7,040mAh battery inside, you've got more than enough juice to last you through a long day. The Tab A7 easily soared past 10 hours of video playback, which is above average for this class of device. Samsung nailed the speakers. With four speakers aboard and Dolby Atmos for tuning via headphones, you can expect great sound. I was very pleased with the overall response of the speakers, which produced rich, detailed sound. Though you can plug directly into the headphone jack, I found the speakers great on their own. The Galaxy Tab A7 runs Android 10 and Samsung One UI 2.5 on the September security update. This is not the latest build from Google, nor the latest UI variant from Samsung. It most certainly isn't a recent security patch. Software updates, even those pertaining to security, will be less frequent with the Tab A7 than they will be with a mid-to-top-end Galaxy smartphone. It's not a bad platform for the tablet, but Samsung's One UI 3, the current version, is much better. The iPad Pro 2022 design hasn't changed much from previous iterations, it's still a great-looking device with a sleek design that simultaneously feels premium and durable. If you're looking for a functional yet attractive tablet, you'll be pleased with what's on offer here. It's important to note that the new iPad Pro is big. The 12.9-inch display means this is a particularly large slate, and many will prefer the smaller 11-inch model, or something even smaller, like the iPad Mini 2019. If you're happy with a larger design, you'll also benefit from a larger display, more on which below. The tablet has an aluminum rear and frame, and the front is glass with a scratch-resistant coating, but you'll want to buy a case if you want to maximize protection against knocks and scrapes. There are four speakers, with two on the top of the device and two on the bottom edge. The bottom of the device is also home to the USB-C port, which is also a Thunderbolt port, we'll look at connectivity in detail later in this review. The side edges of the tablet are sleek and largely free of interruptions, with the right-hand edge designed to recharge the Apple Pencil, it's magnetic, so it'll stick to the side, the volume buttons sit right at the top of that edge.